Arizona football gets back one of its best players to the very, very upset nature of his former coach. You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats. This show is brought to you today by Monopoly Go. Check it out, Monopoly Go. All kinds of good stuff at Monopoly Go. All right, all right. We've got a lot to get to this show, a lot to get to. We are going to lead, though, with Takario Davis. Unless you have been living under a rainy bridge, perhaps in Seattle, you know that Takario Davis is coming back, and he is backing the A. This is a massive, massive deal for Arizona football fans, and there is no other way to put this because Takario Davis is an NFL player. He is a six foot three corner who is incredibly good. So, how did we get here? First of all, Jed Fish was telling everybody and everybody that he would be able to get Takario Davis to the University of Washington, amongst many other uh, people that he said that he was going to get to the University of Washington. But Jed Fish was not being honest about that. Take that, Jed Fish. But Takario Davis on the field is a massive, massive uh, return for the U of A. And it's also a huge deal for the coaching staff. Think about it this way. This coaching staff took over, and nobody really quite knew what to expect. Now, Noah Fafita was coming back. Obviously, that's a uh, – Noah Fafita and T-Mac announced that they were going to come back. That's obviously a big deal. Both those guys are really, really good. And I think it made things a lot easier for uh, diff- other players to say, you know what, we are going to back the A. But, 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 but – That also, I think, goes to show you, though, too, that, you know, not everybody was going to do that. Certain players left. Jonah Coleman took the money and ran. And again, I don't have a problem with him. Jonah Coleman wants to go to Washington. Totally, totally cool. But there were some guys I didn't like how they left. Ephesians Prysock tried to sell his Wildcat jersey on the way out. And then, you know, the other guys that left, it was fine. Deuce Davis, Isaiah Ward, wish him him well. I hope they do well, but Aaron, or I... Deuce Davis does well, and I hope Washington loses every single game. But Takario Davis is a big one because he basically said, listen, I'm going to enter the transfer portal. I'm going to give this coaching staff a chance, and this coaching staff absolutely hit the ball out of the park with him. Obviously, this was it's impossible to really overstate what a big deal this is because this is, you know, in this day and age where – you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, what kind of recruits are you bringing in? All of this. And also, you have to be able to retain players. And it was very, very important that Arizona was able to retain somebody of Takario Davis's caliber because that is a position that you're somewhat weak on on the defensive line, or excuse me, at the cornerback position to begin with. So you're going to have to continue. You're going to have to get some more DBs. But this is also just a very, very nice uh, breath of fresh air. and. You know, Les Fafita tweeted out the other day where, uh, you know, he said that, uh, you know, Takario Davis is a real one. Takario Davis is a real one. That's uh, that is the absolute best way that we can put that. And he is going to give the uh, he's going to give the U of A one of the, uh, you know, one of the best defensive backs in the entire country and a first round pick. I mean, you look at uh, you look at a lot of different uh, NFL mock drafts. And you already have him uh, being slated somewhere to go in that first round. And that is no, there's no funny business involved there. That is true. He is actually a first round player. So we will obviously continue to talk about that. But very, very good news regardless about Takario Davis. Now, with uh, what does this mean now for uh, Jet Fish? All right, Jet Fish. So again, we can kind of look at it now and say the Jed Fish, now again, uh, recruits that never played here. I'm not chalking that up as a loss because they never played here. But Jed Fish was going into Washington, insinuating that he was going to bring all of these great, great players with him. And guess what? You Here's what you got. You got a starting running back and a starting DB. Cool. Boom. That's it. 
I like Deuce Davis a lot, but he's redshirting this year. You also have Isaiah Ward, who is running with the twos. So, all right, you got two starters out of it. Cool story, bro. You didn't get the frontline players. You obviously didn't get your T-Max, your Wendell Moyes, your Jonas Sabanayas, your players like that. You just didn't, you just didn't get those dudes. And I say, ha, 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 ha. But. This is like I said, though, this is a massive, massive deal for the University of Arizona. And I can't really uh, think of a uh, can't really think of a better way to put it. And so going forward, then um, you're, we're going to talk about some of the positions that need to be addressed, because there are certainly some positions that need to be addressed. But Takario Davis, a real one, put that statue right next to T-Mac and to Oh, uh, Noah Fafita, and also right next to uh, Jonas Savanea, Wendell Moy, Jacob Manu, et cetera, et cetera. These dudes are real ones. And again, uh, this was a player that entered the portal, went through the entire process, and decided that I'm going to back the A. And so if you see Takario Davis, give him a thumbs up. Give him a thumbs up. He very much deserves that thumbs up. Back the thumbs up. Now, with uh, the re- like I said, with the rest of this roster, um, I think it's going to be somewhat of a trickle down effect because now at the de- in the defensive ba- or you know with the defensive backs, Takario being in a, being firmly established in a corner is huge, huge, huge. And then you've got three really good safeties. You got three safeties that can absolutely play big time minutes here at the U of A. Obviously, Gunnar Maldonado, my bad, Gunnar. And then you've also got obviously Genesis Smith who I think has the highest potential out of all of them. He, if I don't know if he's going to start, but he's going to play a ton of, he's going to play a ton of minutes. And then Dalton Johnson as well, who's kind of the jack of all trades, the player that uh, is, I think just kind of just a really good fit to have on a football team. So you got all of those dudes. And then, you got, like I said, though, the next thing is you're going to have to address some of the defensive back, or you're going to have to address some of the other corners because getting to Cario Davis back is huge. There's no, uh, there's no way around it, nor will we ever try to minimize getting to Cario Davis back. But I'm not sure you have another starting corner, starting caliber cornerback on the roster. G7 is okay, but I think G7 should be, I believe, be more of a defensive back, or excuse me should probably be more of a core or a, you know kind of a second string guy love trading stooks but i also think the trading stooks is best served in the nickel and coach told me one time he said listen he's like um our job is to go out there and get players at uh, we don't want to take players away from their positions because of need our job is to go out there and get players at that need and let all these players be able to thrive in the positions that they are uh, they are best suited in i.e we are going to keep trading stooks in the nickel so i would imagine in the portal you're going to see some players that will you're going to see some players that will um uh, Arizona will go after obviously at that in that defensive back spot. So that will obviously that will be something that will be interesting to see exactly what happens. But you got to get a little bit better there. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But man, we cannot minimize what Takario Davis coming back because you're bringing back one of the handful of best cornerbacks in the country, and for a new defensive scheme. Well, not a new defensive. Well, somewhat of a deep, new defensive scheme because Dwayne Aquina is the man, but. You know, you're also going to have a deep, you're also going to have a cornerback in uh, Takario Davis. It's going to make life a lot, 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 lot easier for everybody out there. And so when Dwayne Aquina is scheming in the kitchen, making all that stuff work, he is also going to have a, uh, he's going to know that he's got a defensive back that is going to cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. So they got to continue to work on that. We're going to continue about continue. Or we're going to talk about continuing to shore up some issues. But first, one thing that needs no, no shoring up whatsoever is eBay Motors. All right. Here's the deal with eBay Motors, my friend, my friends. Millions of parts for your MVP win every time with parts that fit your ride. Again, this is another one of these ones. You will thank me later with eBay Motors. Very, very good stuff. Cut out the middleman. Cut out the middleman and go straight to eBay Motors yourself and then give the eBay Motor or give the motor parts to somebody you trust. We're in a day and age now where there's a lot of, uh, a lot of not trustworthy people 
Don't fall into that grip of hanging out with one of those non-trustworthy people. This is going to be, this is something that obviously uh, we should all take advantage of. And not only should we all take advantage of, you are being silly if you do not take advantage of this. So again, check it out. eBay Motors, my friends, ebaymotors.com. And this will be something very, very good for everybody. This will, you will thank me later on this one. So again, check it out, eBay Motors and again, ebaymotors.com. All right. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right. Now, 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 now. Let's talk about it because, again, Arizona now, got to get some depth. One thing we talked about it before that was so good about last year's team is that you had a lot of depth on the D-line. Now, again, you might not have had that one player that was just the absolute dynamo, but you had at the ends. You had... You had an Isaiah Ward. You had a Deuce Davis. You had a Taylor Upshaw on the inside. You had a Tyler Manoa. You had a Jacob Kungaika. You had a Tai Tai Uyangalele. You had a, they could just, big BBN. You could just keep kind of coming at you in waves. That's something that Arizona, I think you got a good, that you got a good base for. But, uh, well, that base four obviously is, or I would imagine Kevon Darton and Chuba May will be, the two of those dudes. And then on the outside, you're probably going to have Trey Smith and Ty Ty. Ty Ty has been absolutely fantastic this entire uh, spring. I think this coaching staff very much likes him. And I think Dwayne Aquina, Dwayne Aquina is very, 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 uh, very happy with how all of this is uh, unfolding. So, but you got to get some more depth. Now, if we're talking about depth, I think on the D-line, you're probably, you know, obviously you got Isaiah Johnson, who has been very, very good for uh, the University of Arizona and or who is going to be very good. I believe he's kind of a it's kind of a fire hydrant. And then I think you're also going to see somebody like uh, hmm, of a, uh, a Bear Anderson, who, you know, in from Memphis, I think that he's going to be one of those dudes as well. But off the edge, you got to get more. You got to get more edge rushers. There's, there's no doubt about it. You got to get some more. Uh, you got to get some more DNs. And I think this coaching staff is fully aware of that. You also got to get some more linebackers. Again, Jacob Manu is really, really good. Obviously, Jacob Manu is an All American type candidate. But I also think that uh, you could probably upgrade around him. Tay Brown um, has shown certainly some uh, flashes. I think with Leviticus Sue at this point, I'm not saying Leviticus Sue stinks. Nobody put those words in my mouth. But I also think that he's somewhat limited to a certain degree. There's just like when you watch Jacob Manu, there is a burst to Jacob Manu. There is a there's a quick twitch to him that you do not have with that you do not have with uh, Leviticus Sue. He's a bigger guy. I think maybe in a different era he would have been good, but I'm not sure that that's the guy that you really uh, you really want to have playing 70% of your snaps at that other linebacker spot. So I think Arizona could, would do very, very well to go out there and get another linebacker. And then if that were to happen, then obviously Arizona, I think, would be in a, uh, a nice shape. We talked about how you got to get a couple more corners. And honestly, two, three corners, because I just don't look at it, the roster. And you also got to be able to factor yourself in a little bit that you could be losing somebody like, you probably are going to lose to Cario Davis after the season. He's probably going to go off to the NFL. That is my guess, at least. So we will uh, we'll see on that. So you got to get more DBs, but I'm not telling you anything that this coaching staff isn't clearly, clearly aware of. Then on the other side of the football, love fam. Rayshon Speedy Luke got to hang out with fam's uh, pops, and that was a blast. But, 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 you also have, uh, I think you also have a need for a power back. So there's that. And then on the O-line, we talked about it. I'm fine with the wide receivers. I think with the wide receivers, you're good. I'd like to see another, maybe another backup quarterback in play. I don't believe that Braden Dorman is probably, I'd love to be wrong, but I don't think that Braden Dorman is going to be that dude. So we will certainly see about that. But I would love to see Arizona be able to kind of beef up or kind of beef up a little bit at the backup quarterback spot because, you know, Listen, it's like anything else. If Noah goes down, then Arizona's in a world of hurt, but I get it. Um, now, the offensive line, you got to get, I think you got to get more dudes. Wendell Moy, B 
Big Jonas Sabine, those are NFL players. There's uh, That's just what they look like. That's what NFL players are. I like Polito, but Polito is always hurt. So you got to, you got to, I think you got to get something there. I like Josh Baker a lot, but he, he, Josh Baker's solid. I like Leif, um, but you got to get some more dudes. I think we're kind of at the stage now where you know that Tyler Gonzalez probably isn't good enough. Elijah Payne, probably not good enough. Again, a lot, I, you know, I'd love to be wrong there, but I also, I'm not sure about Big Rhino as well. So you got to get a little bit better on the offensive line. But overall, the, uh, you know, the hallmark of a top, uh, the hallmark of a top, what is it, uh, 20 team is all there as far as what Arizona is able to do. I think that we should all we should all be very, very excited. Uh, we should all be very, very excited about all of this because um, uh, I think we're kind of at the stage right now where you do know that uh, – you do know that uh, Arizona was able to hold on to that was able to hold the uh, was able to hold the fort, and that's a big deal. Listen, you're always going to lose a couple players, but the the overall soul, the overall heartbeat of this team stuck around, and you know you just got to give this you got to give these players and you got to give this coaching staff a great deal of credit for what they were able to do because this wasn't easy. Um, you know, Jed Fish was trying his absolute hardest to be able to get some of these players. And sure, he got a couple, but at the end of the day, you got a starting running back and a DB. Cool. <laughs> but overall, this was a roster that I think uh, Arizona did a very, very good job of maintaining. Very excited to see how this all unfolds because Brent Brennan's got a loaded roster, man. Again, you know, with uh, we're, I, you know, I, I think Brent Brennan's going to be a good coach, but I also think that you know we're going to find out. Uh, I think a lot of times with coaches, I think it's fair to say it takes three, four years to be able, or two, three years to be able to really kind of figure out what they're doing, the trajectory they're going. Brent Brennan, we should have a pretty good idea pretty quickly about this team. There's no excuse for the offense not to be really good. Now the O line certainly needs to. I think it needs to improve. You got to get more dudes in here. I don't now. Maybe Michael Wooten's one of those players that you get from. That you got from Oregon, obviously. You get Michael Wooten in here. Maybe that's a good thing. But you're going to have to continue to get more guys because it's just like I said. You you watch the uh, you watch the O line. I can't have Noah running for his life on every possession because Noah is just far too important for what Arizona wants to do. So obviously something to keep in mind as well. So. Takario Davis, you are the man. Salute emoji. Salute emoji. Thank you very, very, very much for that. All right. We're going to talk a little bit of Arizona basketball. There was some interesting news. But first, Monopoly Go. Check it out. Monopoly Go. All right. Here's the deal. Download Monopoly Go. Free on the App Store and Google Play. All right. Everybody has played Monopoly in the past and it is probably some of the most enjoyable yet maddening experiences, but you enjoyed it. It's kind of like the uh, little brother that annoys you, but you very much like the little brother big picture. Monopoly Go is that way. Now, you don't have to cramp into the back porch. You don't have to cramp into some attic or something like that. You can just check it out with Monopoly Go. Download the Monopoly Go app free on the App Store and Google Play and you can get involved immediately with Monopoly Go. It is fun. Like I said, another one of these spots, and I keep telling you about these, another one of these spots where you will thank me later. Download Monopoly Go free on the App Store and Google Play. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats. Happy Wednesday, and thanks for making this your first listen of the day. We are we have been talking about Takario Tuesday. Now, 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 now. Let's talk a little bit Arizona basketball. So, there's three players that have entered the NBA uh, draft to see kind of what they are, you know, kind of get their feedback, kind of, you know, see what's going on there. And uh, the first one is K.J. Lewis. Now, if you've been listening to Locked on Wildcats, you would know that K.J. Lewis was uh, obviously going to be in there. Duh. Um, Lewis worries me a little bit. I do think he'll be back. But well, I don't know. I just don't like when they start poking and prodding and they're like, oh, this guy over here, he can do some things. I do not like that. I'm not a fan of that. I do not feel comfortable with that. I, uh, like I said, I'm not a huge, just not a huge fan of it, but I understand he's got to do what he's got to do, but I think he would also be greatly, 
greatly benefited by coming back for another year um, because I think that he could be a, honestly, I think he's got the potential to be a top 10 pick. I do. I think that he can be that guy. I think he's got that kind of potential and, but he's got to really work on some things. He's got to work on obviously his ball handling, his three point shooting and going in there and becoming a two way player in the G league is kind of a perilous thing because you might not make it out. Now, some guys, and this is why it worries me a little bit. Some guys are like Dale and Terry where Dale and Terry went in there and uh, he just needed one team to be able to be like, yep, that's the dude. And we could project him two years down the road. And Dalen Terry obviously ended up making a good decision for himself. I do not want KJ Lewis going down that same path. I'm very worried about that. So we need KJ Lewis back. Jane Bradley declared, did not have, did not know that Jane Bradley was going to declare, but I am also okay with it. He wants to get feedback. Totally all right with that. Um, I can probably tell him what they're going to say. Need you to shoot more, but uh, I would have fully expect Jaden Bradley to come back. Now, the one that is fascinating is Caleb Love. So Caleb Love was not on the initial list, and his agent, Mark Bartlestein, appeared to not do his job by, excuse me, not getting uh, Caleb Love on that early entry list. That always cracks me up, how an agent, that's literally your first job. Uh, how do you not get him on that list? But uh we will uh, mock and ridicule at another time. But Caleb Love, obviously, uh, I would imagine it's going to go through the process. I would also imagine that Caleb Love is going to come back. Now, again, there's a lot of reports that it's 50-50, and he certainly could stay in. But the NIL changed everything. Uh, this guy could come back and make a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, more than that, probably three, four hundred thousand dollars to come back to the U of A and to be able, you know, and to have a good time and live that fifth year out. NIL changed it, as did the COVID year. If I'm Caleb Love, I am 1,000% doing that. I don't, if I don't, I don't know that he's ever an NBA player. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure that he is, but guess what? You can leave here with a lot of money, a lot of money. So I'm, uh, I would, I'm cautiously optimistic on Caleb Love. Now, I do not believe, I believe there will be two of the three players on this, uh, from this uh, trio on the roster next year. And Joe Son Sainon, uh, KJ Lewis, and Caleb Love. I don't believe you're going to get all three, but I'll take two out of three because you got to remember the Big 12 next year, that is going to be a monster of a conference. You're going to have Kansas is going to be the unanimous uh, number one team in the country. Then you're going to have Baylor. You're going to have Iowa State. You're going to have Arizona. You're also going to have, um, uh, who am I forgetting? Houston. So, uh, you you got to be tough. You got to be all systems go and you got to be tough and ready to rock and roll. But Tommy Lloyd has done a good job revamping the roster. We are very happy with how Tommy Lloyd has done this. And Tommy Lloyd has done a very, very, very good job. Very introspective of Tommy Lloyd as the great Matt Muehlbach many times says about Tommy Lloyd. So, but back to Takario for a second. Big, big news for the University of Arizona, obviously. Takario Davis, you are the man. You are a leader. We are privileged to be in your presence. And we are going to, uh, you know, like I said, back the Takario. And getting him back was just huge. And take that, Jed Fish, you and those cheating mitts. Stay up there in the Pacific Northwest. You and your agent doing all that dirty work. Stay up there. All right. Now. Uh, we will be back with you tomorrow talking some more Arizona football, obviously, some Arizona basketball as well. But on this note, I very much appreciate you all making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. Bear down, back the A, back the Takario Dave. This, you've been listening to the Locked On Wildcats podcast. <laughs>